Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Manash. On today's show, we're talking about underwriting multifamily apartment deals. Earlier this week, I attended a presentation from the CEO of a software development company. That company developed tools for real estate investors to analyze the investment quality for multifamily apartment deals. The software was developed strictly for the Windows platform and was divided into several different modules that would analyze the operating performance of the property and then the investment returns for any investment in the property. The software seemed fairly sophisticated and capable of analyzing a number of different scenarios. But if you remember last week, I spoke about software tools on December the 2nd. The episode was called Wasted Software. In that episode, I spoke about the software making assumptions about your business process. Well, this particular software was making an assumption that I fundamentally disagree with to the point where I would outright refuse to use the software. Let's walk through the process of analyzing a rental property and and with this software in particular. Not surprisingly, you start with the operating income, which includes all of your rents, net of any vacancies. That's things like parking, cleaning fees, application fees, storage lockers, and so on. From that, subtract all of your operating expenses. That includes all of the common area utilities, property taxes, insurance, property management fees, accounting fees, cleaning fees, snow removal, trash removal, maintenance fees. You get the idea. You subtract all of these expenses from the gross income to get the net operating income. So far, so good. The CEO of the software company then went on to say that you do not include any debt service costs in the calculation of net operating income. That's absolutely correct. And then he went on to say that you don't include any depreciation expense since depreciation is not an actual cash outlay. So far, so good. He then demonstrated how the software calculated the value of the property based on the market cap rate. You simply divide the net operating income by the market cap rate to determine the property value. All of this was great so far. He described how the software used discounted cash flow analysis to calculate the internal rate of return for the investment. But then after that, that's when things went off the rails. In his discussion of net operating income, he said that you need to specifically exclude one-time expenses like replacement of appliances, water heaters, roof replacement, painting, window replacement, and so on. The reason he gave was that if you included those expenses, then you would unfairly penalize the income in that given year since those expenses don't recur every year. You see, his software didn't have the capability to manage a maintenance reserve with differing amortization periods for different replacement schedules. The dollars involved in these larger scale maintenance items are not necessarily balance sheet transactions. You need to be setting money aside on an annual basis to fund those replacements. A water heater is only $800. A window might be $500. But you might only replace a water heater once a decade. You might paint an apartment every two or three years. If you're not including these costs in your property analysis, you're getting a highly skewed view of the actual performance of a property. This is not how we analyze properties. The maintenance reserve is a pot of money that's included in the expenses for a pro forma, recognizing that these dollars might not be spent every year. This is particularly true in a brand new building where you're not going to be replacing major components for a number of years. In a new building, you might not experience these replacements maybe even for the first decade. But if you fail to take those replacement schedules into account, you're going to have a skewed perspective and a nasty surprise of the true operating cost of the property. This is an example of a limitation in a software tool driving business process, If that is, if you adopt that software tool, rather than the opposite. And it frustrates me when a flawed thinking process propagates all the way through an analysis. The number one area that I consistently find misanalyzed in rental property performance is maintenance. One of the hardest items to predict is when large items will fail and how to account for those items. You can easily delude yourself for a long time on the true cost of maintenance. But only when the cash flow turns negative and capital calls become recurring will the depth of the error be fully understood. The art is to gain clarity of true maintenance costs and maintain a running model where the expectation for the future accurately reflects the future as it unfolds. Painting of apartments does not happen on a regular schedule. It's a function of unit turns. It's not a one-time expense. It's a recurring expense. It forms part of the unit turn expense along with cleaning, carpet replacement, and repair of window blinds. The frequency of these events is a function of the rate of tenant turnover, more than the natural wear-out mechanisms of the building elements themselves. This is an example of flawed thinking 
driving the process for the design of a software system. And that software system, eventually, if adopted by building owners, forces an improper system of forecasting and financial management. I'm not here to criticize any specific company, which is why I'm not going to name them publicly on this episode. The purpose of this discussion is for you to perform thorough due diligence before you consider adopting any software system. That due diligence involves a deep examination of the processes that are assumed in the software system. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. I'll talk to you again tomorrow.